Progress Report 11, April 21st. Still didn't go into the factory. I told Mrs. Flynn, my landlady, to call and tell Mr. Donegan I was sick. Mrs. Flynn looks at me very funny lately, like she's scared of me. I think it's a good thing about finding out how everybody laughs at me. I thought about it a lot. It's because I'm so dumb and I don't even know when I'm doing something dumb. People think it's funny when you're a dumb person, when a dumb person can't do things the same way they can. Anyway, now I know I'm getting smarter every day. I know punctuation and I can spell good. I like to look at all of the hard words in the dictionary and I remember them. I'm reading a lot now and Miss Kinian says I read very fast. Sometimes I even understand what I'm reading about and it stays in my mind. There are times when I can close my eyes and think of a page and it all comes back like a picture. Besides history, geography, and arithmetic, Miss Kinian said I should start to learn a few foreign languages. Dr. Strauss gave me some more tapes to play while I sleep. I still don't understand how the conscious and unconscious mind works, but Dr. Strauss does not to worry yet. He asked me to promise that when I start learning college subjects next week, I won't read any books on psychology, that is, until he gives me permission. I feel a lot better today, but I guess I'm still a little angry at all the time people were laughing and making fun of me because I wasn't so smart. When I become intelligent, like Dr. Strauss says, with three times my LO of 68, then maybe I'll be like everyone else and people will like me and be friendly. I'm not sure what an IQ is. Dr. Niemer said it was something that measured how intelligent you were, like a scale in the drugstore weighs pounds. But Dr. Strauss had a big argument with him and said an IQ didn't weigh intelligence at all. He said an IQ showed how much intelligence you could get, like the numbers on the outside of a measuring cup. You had to fill the cup up with stuff. Then when I asked Bert, who gives me my intelligent test and works with Eldronon, he said that both of them were wrong. Only I had to promise not to tell them he said so. Bert says that IQ measures a lot of different things, including some of the things you learned already, and it really isn't any good at all. So I don't know, well, I still don't know what IQ is, except that mine is going to be over 200 soon. I didn't want to say anything, but I don't see how if they don't know what it is or where it is, I don't see how they know how much of it I've got. Dr. Niemer says I have to take a Rorschach test tomorrow. I wonder what that is. April 22nd, I found out what a Rorschach is. It's the test I took before the operation, the one with the ink blots on the pieces of cardboard. The man who gave me the test was the same one. I was scared to death of those ink blots. I knew he was going to ask me to find the pictures and I knew I wouldn't be able to. I was thinking to myself, if only there was some way of knowing what kind of pictures were hidden there. Maybe they weren't pictures at all. Maybe they weren't any pictures at all. Maybe it was just a trick to see if I was dumb enough to look for something that wasn't there. Just thinking about that made me sore at him. All right, Charlie, he said, you've seen these cards before, remember? Of course I remember. The way I said it, he knew I was angry and he looked surprised. Yes, of course, now I want you to look at this one. What might this be? What do you see on this card? People see all sorts of things in these ink blots. Tell me what it might be for you. What? it makes you think of. I was shocked. That wasn't what I had expected him to say at all. You mean there are no pictures hidden in those ink blots? He frowned and took off, took off his glasses. What? Pictures hidden in the ink blot. Last time you told me that everyone could see them and you wanted me to find them too. He explained to me that the last time he had used almost the exact same words as he was using now. I didn't believe it, and I still have the suspicion that he misled me at the time just for the fun of it. Unless, I don't know anymore, could I have been that feeble-minded? When we, we went through the cards slowly. One of them looked like a pair of bats tugging at something. Another one looked like two men fencing with swords. I imagined all sorts of things. I guess I got carried away. But I didn't trust him anymore, and I kept turning them around and looking 
and even looking on the back to see if there was anything there I was supposed to catch. While he was making his notes, I peeked out the corner of my eye to read it. But all it was, but it was all in code and it looked like this. The test still doesn't make any sense to me. It seems to me that anyone could make up lies about things that they didn't really see. How could he know I wasn't the I wasn't making a fool of him by mentioning things that I didn't really imagine. Maybe I'll understand it when Dr. Strauss lets me read up on psychology. April 25th. I figured out a new way to line up the machines in the factory and Mr. Donegan says it will save him $10,000 a year in labor and increased production. He gave me a $25 bonus. I wanted to take Joe Carp and Frank Riley out to lunch to celebrate, but Joe said he had some things to buy for his wife and Frank said he was meeting his cousin for lunch. I guess it'll take a little more time for them to get used to the changes in me. Everyone seem, everybody seemed to be frightened of me. When I went over to Amos Borg and tapped him on the shoulder, he jumped in the air. People don't talk to me much anymore or kid around the way they used to. It makes me feel... It makes the job kind of lonely. April 27th. I got up the nerve today to ask Miss Kinian to have dinner with me tomorrow night to celebrate my bonus. At first she wasn't sure it was right, but I asked Dr. Strauss and he said it was okay. Dr. Strauss and Dr. Niemer don't seem to be getting along so well. They're arguing all the time. This evening when I came in to ask Dr. Strauss about having dinner with Miss Kinian, I heard them shouting. Dr. Niemer was saying that it was his experiment and his research, and Dr. Strauss was shouting back that he contributed just as much because he found me through Ms. Kinian and he performed the operation. Dr. Strauss said that someday thousands of neurosurgeons might be using his technique all over the world. Dr. Niemer wanted to publish the results of the experiment at the end of this month. Dr. Strauss wanted to wait a while longer to be sure. Dr. Strauss said, that Dr. Niemer was more interested in the chair of psychology at Princeton than he was in the experiment. Dr. Niemer said that Dr. Strauss was nothing but an opportunist who was trying to ride to glory on his coattails. When I left afterwards, I found myself trembling. I don't know why for sure, but it was as if I had seen both men clearly for the first time. I remember hearing Bert say that Dr. Niemer had a shrew of a wife who was pushing him all the time to get things published so that he could become famous. Bert said that the dream of her life was to have a big shot husband. Was Dr. Strauss really trying to ride on his coattails? April 28th. I don't know or I don't understand why I never noticed how beautiful Miss Kinian really is. She has brown eyes and feathery brown hair that comes to the top of her neck. She's only 34. I think from the beginning I had the feeling she was an unreasonable genius and very, very old. Now every time I see her, she grows younger and more lovely. We had dinner and a long talk. When she said that I was coming along so fast that soon she, I'd be leaving her behind, I said, it, I laughed. It's true, Charlie. You're already a better reader than, than I am. You can read a whole page at a glance while I can take in only a few lines at a time. And you remember every single thing you read. I'm lucky if I can recall the main thoughts and the general meaning. You've got to be a little more patient. You're accomplishing in days and weeks what it takes normal people to do in half a lifetime. That's what makes it so amazing. You're like a giant sponge now, soaking things in. Facts, figures, general knowledge, as soon as you'll begin to con and soon you'll begin to connect them too. You'll see how the different branches of learning are related. There are many levels, Charlie, like steps on a giant ladder that take you up higher and higher to see more and more of the world around you. I can see only a little bit of that, Charlie, and I won't go much higher than I am now but you'll keep climbing up and up and see more and more and each step will open new worlds that you never knew existed. She frowned. I hope, I just hope to God. What? Never mind, Charles. I just hope I wasn't wrong to advise you to go into this in the first place. I laughed. How could that be? It worked, didn't it? Even Elgernon is still smart. We sat there silently for a few and I knew what she was thinking 
I knew what she was thinking about as she watched me toying with the chain of my rabbit's foot and my keys. I didn't want her to think of that possibility any more than elderly people want to think of death. I knew this was the only I knew this was only the beginning. I knew what she meant about levels because I'd seen some of them already. I thought of leaving her behind the thought of leaving her behind made me sad. I'm in love with Miss Kinian.